whether you're talking about a neighborhood or a census tract, a county or a city, a state or a country, what they all have in common is that they're economies. And as with any economy, goods and services are produced there. You'll remember from the prior chapter that one of three economics questions that need to be answered is how to produce things. And just how do economies go about producing anything? Well, they use what economists call factors of production, resources that can be used in the production of goods and services. We assume all economies have them and that those factors of production provide utility, a level of satisfaction people derive from what they consume. Think about the kind of indescribable sensation you get from biting into your favorite breakfast after a long and restful night. That's utility. The factors of production that an economy uses to produce that utility generally fall into three main categories, labor, capital, or natural resources. Some characteristics distinguish the three factors. Labor, for example, is the human effort applied to production. It can include the effort a professor puts into a lesson plan, the effort a construction worker puts into an apartment, or the effort a police officer puts into deterring criminal activity. All of those would be considered laborers, differentiated by their individual human capital. That's what we call the unique skills each laborer applies to production. Human capital can be improved typically either through education or on the job experience. Labor can be increased also either by increasing the number of people working or the hours being worked. Capital, though, is anything produced for the purpose of producing other goods and services. So, for example, a cash register, word processing software, and a police SUV may all be considered different types of capital. Notice all of those are used to create other goods and services. What isn't capital is money. We'll learn more about money later, but for now, just appreciate that money is something we call financial capital. Like stocks and bonds, these financial capital assets can be useful for acquiring factors of production or goods and services, but they don't actually count as either. Don't worry, we'll get into the concept of money and finance soon enough. Finally, there are natural resources, which are, for lack of a better term, God-given. They exist in nature without any human effort. They also need to be useful in the production of a good or service. For example, raw oil, water, and wind are natural resources because all three could be used to provide energy used in the production of a good or service. The only catch is that we need to have the knowledge to use something in nature to make it a natural resource. Avocados are only a natural resource if we know how to use them to make guacamole. Now, what happens with all these factors of production to make a good or service? In a typical market-based capitalist economy, there's someone we would call an entrepreneur. They act as an organizer of the factors of production, rallying them together so that baristas, espresso machines, and coffee beans can provide gourmet coffee. The entrepreneur doesn't do this out of the kindness of their heart. They're organizing these factors of production to make coffee as a business. Likely a coffee shop, but these days, who knows? A business that makes the entrepreneur a profit, though. And often, it's not enough to just make coffee. To secure and increase their profit margins, the entrepreneur will often seek assistance from technology. The La Pavoni Bar T3 espresso machine may beat the cup holders off the Bezzera Magica E61 and secure its owner more sales per hour, translating into larger quarterly profits. Technology could help the inventory manager purchase only the best coffee beans at the best prices and times. Technology offers an opportunity over time to expand the potential output from what are fundamentally the same factors of production. Now, this is one way of thinking about factors of production, a way best described as microeconomic, focusing mostly on the concept of a single firm and the decision by an entrepreneur to privately organize factors of production to generate profit. In reality, there are multiple ways for these factors of production to be organized. And a more macroeconomic way of thinking about factors of production would include considering how governments, for example, take the limited factors of production they have, civil servants, computers, and rivers, for example, to provide a variety of services for their constituents. Both the government and the entrepreneur have to answer the same economic question. What goods and services will they provide? We'll have the answer to that next.